Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and this system over here, it's been foraging. That's the reason I've got a stick over here, kind of like a do not feed symbol for myself. It's been in a foraging mode for three weeks. I haven't really had a chance to even check on it in about two weeks. So I want to get this thing up on the bench and see how things are progressing. So let's get to work. It's funny from here, it looks like a, a little billiard table, right? So it's kind of like, okay, eight ball in the corner pocket. <laughs> uh, I couldn't resist, but when I saw the way this hall looked with this here on the top with the with the nice bright lights overhead, it made me think of the billiard table. Oh, let's see. I thought I saw a couple flying insects. I was expecting to see a big swarm of them underneath. Okay, here we go. There's a couple of them on this cardboard. One, two, three. There was one right there, too, on the plastic, but luckily not as many as I thought. I thought I was going to see a whole bunch of them. Oh, I'd really prefer if I didn't suddenly have to start dealing with the flying insect problem. Wow, this stuff looks really nice. So as I peel back the um, plastic, luckily I don't see any worms stuck to it. Oops, perhaps I could just set it aside without having to pick any worms off. So I shook some castings all over the place, making a mess in the first couple minutes here. Typically when I open up a system, I don't really see this many castings piled up on top. And I don't know if it's some sort of a combination of the fact that I believe that this is one of my more heavily populated bins. It probably has a lot to do with that plastic that we just removed. Forcing the recirculation of all the moisture that's held within the bin. And every time that it tries to evaporate, it gets caught, drips back down. So it really makes for a nice cozy environment on the top surface, I'm, I'm imagining, at least from the perspective of a worm, all the way out to the edge. So that plastic's doing such a good job. I guess there's still scraps of paper. I'm not sure how big these were last time we were in here. Maybe when I review the video from last time, I'll have a better sense of it. But I do see there's other remnants of paper that were stripped out across the top. Wondering if there's any others. See a few others over here, but certainly not much. The, the top surface, I would imagine, is probably a spot where it's going to get chewed up quick because of you know the worms coming up for the moisture. All these castings are clear evidence of all the worm activity that's occurred on the surface. So I'm sure leaving those out on the top surface will pretty much ensure that they'll be gone very soon. There's other things in here, as I can see, is a um, some sort of like a peach pit or something. You know, if the material in this bin is really getting geared up for harvesting, then something like this obviously isn't going to get broken down between now and the um, time of harvesting this system. It might make good sense to simply remove anything like that if I encounter it. The material is certainly damp. There's a lot of moisture in it. I'm sure it's um, really enjoyed by the worms. The worms probably totally love it. But I, I only intended to leave things this way up until a point where I felt like the worms had really done a number on all the little scraps of stuff in this material. I really wanted to get to the point where when I initiate the migration of the worms out of this material, they're going to be pretty heavily motivated to do that. You know, they're going to want to um, get out of this stuff because of an absence of food and I think we're pretty much at that point I'm, I'm not really seeing much you know here and there there's a scrap of paper on the surface I saw a peach pit but they're not going to be able to make much use of that I'm pulling out little sticks and stems I can't really hardly imagine this material lasting very much longer in the current um, considering the current state that it's in right now Here's a, probably what remains of a banana stem. But, you know, we're not initiating the migration of the worms out of the system yet. We're, we're still just checking it out to see, you know, how much of this sort of stuff still remains. And I mean, it, it might look pretty large, but this is the stem of a banana. And for it to have gotten to this point already, there's really not much remaining. It takes a good couple months for it to get to that point. 
stems usually last the longest and that's pretty much the finishing throws of it still kind of holding together as a single object here's like the um, outer husk of a, a, ma a mangoes seed Ooh. and you know if you've ever handled this material you know that it's super tough it's just like a thin sheet of wood basically but you could see me crumbling it into little itsy bitsy pieces in my fingers so I'm not really encountering much of anything that seems like it's going to take a very long time. Whatever that was in my hand, I don't know what it was, but I just broke it into three littler, littler pieces, smaller pieces. And, you know, you could tell already there's tons of worms in this thing, right? This thing is just mobbed with worms. And so far, I don't really feel like we've encountered, like, some sort of a large chunk of food that seems like it's going to, you know, significantly delay the completion of this bin all the last little scraps of material in here a bin with this many worms in it it's probably gonna do away with what remains in here pretty quick this looks like it might have been the skin of a piece of apple or something it's just got that glossy kind of appearance to it I think that stuff will eventually break down too okay I've finally encountered a larger chunk of something which actually looks like it even has remnants of food on it the um, the shell of an avocado as well as some of the material that was in the avocado which I'll just let them have they can polish that off but I guess you know there's probably no harm in taking out some larger chunks of stuff so that um the outer husk of the avocado I think I'm gonna pull out of here too this piece of paper though this piece of paper can probably stay too it's just these bigger, weird things. Peach pit. I'll just go ahead and chuck these into the youngest of my red wiggler bins. There'll be tons of time for that stuff to break down in there. So I could see this bin going just like this for maybe another, I don't know, week? Two weeks or so? What do you think? Based on what we've seen here so far, how long before I can really just look in here and consider this to be pretty much finished castings? I'm sure there's not a lot of surprises remaining in here. I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts, but, you know, I will be putting it back up on the shelf. It will continue. But without stuff like this, it's another peach pit. The other one might have been a plum pit. It was a little bit smaller. And I'm sure just by tilling, tilling this stuff up like this probably helps a little bit just with giving the worms more easy mobility through the stuff. So like here's another slow composting item it's a part of a avocado seed and it'll probably break up into little chunks if I attempted to chip away at it so I was able to break it in half pretty easily I could probably crumble it into smaller pieces which will probably have a better chance of breaking down but you know what let's include it with our little collection of stuff that we're going to simply remove from here in the interest of trying to help this system get to the finish line a little bit more easily not to say that any of those things are going to de delay the process i can't see any of those as you know running the risk of be suddenly becoming a, a consistent um you know source of nourishment for the worm so that they're not picking away the small tiny stuff i want them focusing on it's just these sort of things that are just definitely not going to be done you know when the time comes to harvest this material and move the worms elsewhere so we pretty much examined oh wow <laughs> I'm sure this bin is full of surprises we just haven't even stumbled on yet but they're probably working on something that's really tasty I don't see it or haven't felt anything that could be that maybe they just sort of finished polishing off something really yummy and they're still just kind of hanging out digesting <laughs> oh what is this I finally found one large chunk of something this must be pineapple I had I thought it was pineapple maybe not though I thought I had taken a few large chunks of pineapple and placed them into a couple of my bins and I thought that this might have been one of them if we find another large piece similar to this then we know that we'll know that it was pineapple I just tried taking a, a little whiff of it. 
I couldn't really sense that it was pineapple or what it was. There wasn't really any odor to it. Even though it looks like a big chunk of leftover something, there's really no um, clue as to what it really is based on its smell. Here too, it's just, you know, anywhere you go, there's just, <laughs> look at them all. There's just worms everywhere. Just pick up a chunk of material and it's just mobbed with worms. This is definitely a fun bin. At some point too soon, but not yet, yet, not yet. I'm going to leave the plastic on, but soon I'm going to remove the plastic and start letting this material air out a little bit. It's, um, it's super damp. The worms love it, but if I let the sur the top surface start to dry out now, it'll um it'll just become a, a, an area where the worms are not going to want to spend a lot of time and break down any of the materials that might be at that level. I'd really leave I'd really like to leave things in such a way that the worms are super comfortable, you know, moving through all sections of the bin, including the top surface, and. Um, and as long as the top surface is exposed to the air and bone dry, you know, you're not going to have a lot of wor um, worms wanting to go there. So whatever. I mean, there's a good number of objects here that I've removed, which I think is going to um, help the worms kind of focus. And it's stuff that we would have had to have picked out anyway at some point, right? Because it's not the sort of stuff that's going to end up in a batch of finished castings. So one way or another, it was coming out. And the fact that we just removed it now, it's fine with me. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here too. Maybe um, next time we come in here, we'll give the whole thing another little aeration. At that point, we might actually elect to leave the coverings off, allow it to start drying. But I believe that that will be dependent on, you know, how the material looks. But you gotta admit, the material looks really fine. I'm just bumping into a few other little things I'm thinking I'm gonna pull out now, which I know are not going to break down between now and the harvesting of this material, so I'm just going to put them elsewhere, someplace where they've got a better chance at eventually breaking down, where there's going to be more time for that to happen. So yeah, there's probably still chunks of stuff I could be pulling out of here, but for now I think we've done a pretty good job kind of tilling up the material, inspecting how it's all coming along, pulling out some large chunks of stuff that's not going to be part of this materials harvest anyway. And I think we've just pretty much confirmed that everything's still doing good even though we haven't um, been checking on it lately. And I'm sure it'll continue to be good like that going forward. Now let's give these little guys a chance to bail out and we'll watch them in fast motion. Okay, I'm going to try to carefully bring back this piece of plastic without spilling castings all over the place. I got a feeling we're going to find a similar situation in here next time we come back. I'm sure the worms are going to continue cruising through this material actively the way they've been doing. Depositing castings all along the top surface along the way. Making the top surface of this thing really beautiful again next time we check in. I don't know, maybe we won't wait two weeks again like we did this time. It's just that when a bin is foraging, it doesn't require any food. I don't really think that much about it. Um, so, you know, sometimes it'll just go without any attention for a little longer than need be. And it's kind of cool sometimes to find a nice top covering full of castings like that. I definitely thought that that was cool. All right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Just my quick check-in on my foraging red wiggler bin. And um, someday soon I think it'll be ready for initiation and migration. But for now it's just foraging. Alright everyone, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. Alright everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Oops, almost forgot my stick. <laughs>